Hello, my name is Darcy and I'm one of your friendly neighborhood teen and 20-somethings librarians. Today we're going to be making moon mirrors. If you picked up a kit, you should have a small round mirror, a small piece of adhesive backed magnet, a small lump of clay, some white glue, a small bag of silver paint, a small bag of black paint, a toothpick, and a chopstick. You'll also need a pair of scissors and some paper to use as a table covering. If you didn't pick up a kit, no worries. A lot of these supplies can be found at a craft store. You might be able to find a small mirror either at the craft store itself, online somewhere, or even at a thrift store. But let's get started. So to get started, you're going to need your mirror, your clay, your toothpick, your chopstick, and you're gonna to need to put down some kind of paper or something so the clay does not get everywhere. You can definitely clean it up off of a table surface, but it's easier if you prep in advance. So the first thing you're gonna do is open up your clay. It should still be pretty soft, but this is air dry clay. So if it is too hard to work with, you can put a little bit of water on it and kind of gently massage it until it is workable. So we're going to kind of shape it into like this kind of shape. A tube, but thicker in the middle, thinner on the edges. Just to give it some base shape before we stick it on the mirror. All right, and once you've got, I don't know, like a banana-ish shape, we're gonna go ahead and choose kind of where we wanna stick it. I'm gonna put it on the edge here. and just kind of start pressing it onto the section of our mirror. And you do want it to kind of curl over the edge to the back, mostly because these edges are kind of sharp, um, but also it completes the effect. So once you have your basic banana on there, you're just gonna refine this shape until it is a smooth kind of crescent moon and about the size that we want it. So you can make it however big or small you want. If you don't wanna make it a crescent, if you wanna make it a much larger chunk or even half, you can absolutely do that. This is your moon mirror, do how you please. So now that I have my kind of base shape out, Mostly, there's some edge bits there that I don't love. So one, this is very thick right now. I'm probably gonna take off a little bit of this just so it's not quite as dense. The thicker your clay is, the longer it's gonna take to dry. So I'm gonna just pinch off kind of a top layer of this just so it's a little less dense. Um, but really only in the middle, I, like the edge, the width of the edges is fine. not going to be too worried about what it looks like at the moment because we're going to put in a bunch of texture. I'm just using the back of my nail to kind of push that seam in. So now I'm going to work on the back. I'm actually just going to chunk off a little bit of this as well. Because we'll be adding the magnet to the back, you don't want it to be too thick back here. You can also kind of smoosh it down. We just want the lightest little rollover. So just about like that. All of our edges are covered a little bit, but nothing's too chunky back here. And now we're gonna go back to the front. So now we are going to add in our kind of moon texture and that's what your chopstick and toothpick are for. So the chopstick is good, especially this rounded back end, can be good for making large craters. If you wanna kind of decide if you wanna put in a bigger crater, if it look cool. You can do that with your chopstick and you can kind of build up your edge. Oh, 
and smooth sections out. You can also use the smaller end to make slightly smaller craters. And just kind of general tapping it out. So that's, the chopstick is nice for that big stuff, but for their, your kind of little moon texture, you're probably gonna wanna use your toothpick. And now you can use the tiny end, but that would take you a long time to add a, lot, a nice amount of texture. So what I like to do is actually break my toothpick in half and then I've got this kind of scruffy end that I kind of make slightly less scruffy and maybe scrape around a little bit. So it's still, it's definitely a textured end, but it's not as immediately sharp as just the sharp end of a toothpick would be. And then we're just gonna go in and add a bunch of textury bits to our moon. See, that looks much more organic than just kind of the smooth moon, but you can make your moon look like whatever you want. You are the master of this moon. If you want, you can kind of give yourself some like ravine bits by just pressing a little bit harder when you're tapping with your toothpick. And you can have some smooth areas that don't really have as much, just the difference kind of is what makes it look pleasantly organic, is to have a variety of different textures on there. So now that I've done a good bit of my texturing part on this top section, I think I'm gonna add in another crater, like down here, just so I have some more difference. But you can see I've done some kind of deeper spots with like a lot of where I'm pushing pretty hard with my ripped toothpick, and then some sections that are much lighter where I'm really not doing a lot. A lot of it I'm kind of deciding by how many fingerprints you can see in the clay. It's easier to cover up fingerprints with a little bit of texture than it is to try and deal with them later or just not worry about them, that's fine too. And once you've kind of textured your moons to a point that you are pleased with, you're just gonna let it air dry. So the deal with this clay is that it dries in the air, of course, um, but it is almost certainly going to crack. And that is okay. Don't get freaked out if it cracks, just let it keep going, let it dry until it's completely dry, and then we'll deal with all the cracks we might get. So you can, if you wanna save this other air dry clay, you can just use it for air dry clay stuff. Uh, just wrap it up back in your plastic wrap for now. And it should stay good for a little while. It will still dry out in the plastic wrap, of course, so don't wait too long to use it. So we are gonna let this air dry as long as it needs, and then we'll come back when it is completely dry and see what we've got. All right, so we have let things dry for about 24 hours. And as you can see, we do have some cracks that kind of appeared in our drying time, but this is pretty normal. You might have more substantial cracks, you might have less. That is what our glue is for. So we're gonna take our container of glue and we're just kind of gonna goop a bit in to all of our cracks. You want it to get seeped in there pretty well and spread it around on top, if that makes sense. I'm just gonna use my fingers because I find it's way easier to do that and wash your hands afterwards. It's okay if it gets on the mirror, you can always clean it off later.
So that is my biggest cracks filled in for the most part. I might do a little bit more, but you'll notice that when I fill them in, I put a good bit on there and then you kind of brush it around with your finger. You, one, this is gonna make it look more organic when it dries. It's gonna be less obviously a blurp of glue, um, but it also kind of spreads things out a little bit and might get into more of those other little nooks and crannies to kind of stabilize the glue on the clay. Um, but it doesn't have to be perfect and it's good to have some open areas that aren't glued as well if you can. Um, if, you, if your moon really cracked, then that's fine. Just glue as much as you need to. Um, it'll do just fine. And you can kind of get these edges too, but you don't want to put glue on the back yet because you got to sit and let this dry now. So we're going to let this dry fully and you can come back. So we'll come back when it's fully dry, when the glue section is done. But if you let the first coat of glue dry all the way and there's still some pretty substantial cracks, you can always add more coats of glue. That is okay. If you have tons of glue, um, just keep filling in. If you have really substantial cracks, you can just keep filling in that section so it doesn't have that really clear line if you want. We are gonna let this guy dry and we'll be back when the glue is completely dry. So we've let our glue dry. I actually went in and did another layer of glue and one option you have for any kind of really deep cracks, so for what I did for this one, is you can go back through with a little bit of your leftover clay and just kind of fill in as much as you can and smooth it out over the top. This can help fill in any bigger cracks that you have or any places that are kind of harder to fill. Um, and then you just need to make sure everything's totally dry again. So once it's all fully dry, we're gonna move on to doing a little bit of painting. So we're gonna take, um, I cleaned out my um, glue dish, but you can use any little cup that you can wash and put a little bit of water in there. And we're gonna put in a good bit of our black paint. So we're just making ourselves a wash. We're just gonna blurp it in that water. Now my cup is not very full of water. It's just got, you know, maybe at most like a fourth full of water. We don't want this to be super thin. Glue all my paint in there. And then you're gonna stir it up. You can use your chopstick, you can use whatever you have on hand. You can use your finger if you want. Basically making paint water. So it shouldn't be very dark at all. So that's where we're at. So we can use either a strip of paper or a paper towel works really well for this. What you're gonna do is rip off a piece of your paper towel and kind of clump it up and you're gonna dip it in your paint solution so it's pretty wet you're gonna keep your clean piece of paper towel handy and you're just gonna blop this all over your moon and then you're gonna wipe off any excess so this is gonna get into all the little nooks and crannies um, and kind of highlight the texture we've put on there but you don't want it to all be like really dark. You want the moon to be pretty white or light colored as the clay is really. So we're gonna wash what we've got. So I put on a big section and now I'm gonna wipe off a fair bit. And we're just gonna keep doing that. So don't be startled if it's pretty stark. Um, it will kind of become less obvious as it dries. And also you don't want to push really hard when you're wiping stuff off because this clay is air dry clay, which means when you get it wet, it becomes uh, workable again. So don't, don't squish it too hard. You might lose some of your texture. We're just kind of dabbing and undabbing. And this is our washed, it's still wet, uh, moon. So it's picked up a ton more of the texture. You can really see a lot more of what we did with our, you know, broken toothpick and our craters look so much more startling. So we're going to let this dry and then we're going to do our last step, which is coming in with our silver paint to highlight things. All right, now that our wash has dried, we're going to go in and do our highlight. So if you have like a paintbrush at home, you can do that with a paintbrush, but I'm just going to do it with my finger. Um, this kind of silver white paint that you have is fairly translucent on its own and with a finger you kind of get a good bit of control over it. So I'm just going to get a little bit on the pad of my finger, not like a ton, and I'm just going to brush it across the top and kind of rub it in a little bit 
you really only want to catch the tops of things and kind of the general texture of where things are. Oop, see, that was too much. So I'm going to try and rub that bit in and use my paper towel. It's not terrible. See, that's how it's supposed to work, where you're getting just the, like the tops of these cratery areas. And that is painting done. So now we are going to do our little bit of cleanup. So oops, first step of cleanup is don't rub paint on it. Um, this is, you can do this with a wet paper towel, but basically you just want to get everything off of the mirror section that's not your moon piece. Um, if it's glue on there, scraping tends to work pretty well um, because it's just not much glue. Uh, if it's paint and you can't get it off with scraping, you can put a little bit of water on there, but I wouldn't get too much and just be careful of the edges of your mirror because they are going to be a little bit sharp. Well, that's not like perfectly clean at all. It's pretty streaky, but it's okay. The last step we're going to do is add the magnet to the back. So you have a piece or maybe two pieces, two strips of magnet. So you're going to need your scissors. It's very it's very um, thin magnet, so it's quite easy to cut. And basically, you want to cut magnet so that it will cover as much of the back as you can get. So if you only have stripes, you can just do those two big chunks. That's fine. Um, it doesn't need to be fully covered at all for this to work. Um, but if you have a larger piece and you want to cut all the way around very carefully, you can. Uh, just be gentle when you're trimming around your actual moon because the, that clay can break off. So that's my magnet piece cut. I'm gonna trim that little bit there. That will fit just fine. And now I'm going to flip my mirror over, peel off the adhesive back here. There we go. And then carefully stick my magnet to the back of my mirror so that it doesn't overlap anywhere to the edge. And Press it down pretty well, but be gentle. Don't break your mirror. And you are good to go. That is your moon mirror magnet completely finished. You can stick it to the fridge, a locker, anything metal basically. Now, like I said, please do be gentle with the mirror, the moon part of your mirror and the mirror itself. Um, the, the air dry clay is not like super bonded to the mirror itself. It is kind of bonded and your little edge here keeps it held on pretty well. But if you drop it and this cracks more, it's likely that the entire moon will fall off and then you'll have to glue all of it back together, which you totally can do, but just be gentle with it and it will last for a very long time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.